Hi there, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, Ludlum Model 44-9 probe. This is a Geiger Mueller or GM detector and it's capable of detecting alpha, beta and gamma radiation. A lot of times you'll hear this referred to as a pancake probe or a pancake detector. Sometimes folks will call it a Frisker probe as well. If we look at the detector part of this, it's got an active window area of about 15 square centimeters and you can see the little screen here that covers it and if you take into account the open area of this screen it gives you about 12 square centimeters of, of open area. The detector can be connected to a pretty wide variety of different survey instruments uh, any of them that operate between 850 to about a thousand volts will work uh, 900 volts being ideal for this type of probe or this type of detector. If we look at the detector itself it's actually housed inside the handle uh, and can be removed pretty easy. You've got uh, three little uh, set screws here that you take the back of the probe off and remove those set screws and the detector comes out pretty easy and can get replaced if it's damaged. It costs about, a, about $130 for a new uh, uh, probe. Uh, the detector here that I've got, I've got one taken apart and you can see this uh, the probe that I've got pulled out here. You can take a look and see this little mica window that covers the probe and you can see what the inside of the detector itself looks like. The little stainless steel screen protects that mica window and, and uh, helps keep it covered. You want to be really careful when you're using this to survey for contamination because it, it can be fairly easy to pop that probe. Especially if you're surveying anything that might have maybe a piece of wire or something sharp poking out or uh, I've popped them surveying wood. Uh, so any anything that, that could have something that could stick through that screen and pop that probe. They'll also rupture above 8,000 feet in altitude, so you want to be careful if you're going to be shipping this via air uh, in a cargo aircraft or something like that. You want to make sure it's an airtight container. I use these airtight Pelican cases to ship these and those work really well. Uh, this detector is a really good choice for surveying personnel and equipment for radioactive contamination. But I think as uh, any health physicist will tell you, it's not such a great choice for taking radiation measurements. This detector's response to gamma radiation will vary significantly depending on the energy of the uh, incoming gamma ray. So that means you're very likely to get false uh, exposure or dose rate readings. And I'll talk a little bit more about that a little later. But to use this detector for what it's ideally suited for, which is contamination monitoring, the probe should be held about a half inch away from the surface of your surveying and moved about one to two inches per second. Uh, typical background with this uh, type of detector is going to be about 50 counts per minute or 50 CPM, somewhere in that, in that range. While you're surveying, you want to listen to the audible count rate and pause anytime you hear an increase above background to make sure you give that instrument adequate time to respond. Uh, with this type of detector, uh, most jurisdictions consider an object or a person contaminated uh, when you get a reading 100 counts per minute above background. Some folks will use twice background, I've seen that, but uh, 100 counts per minute seems to be above background, seems to be the most widely used. Uh, with a limit like that, you shouldn't perform contamination surveys in areas where the background reading is greater than 300 counts per minute. So you want to make sure you move an object or a person to a lower background area uh, to survey somebody. Uh, I said earlier that it wasn't a great choice for taking radiation measurements and the reason for this is because this detector is highly uh, energy dependent. Uh, it's, in, it's considered an energy dependent uh, detector and to illustrate this if you take a look at the response curve for the 44-9 detector you can kind of see that. These detectors are normalized to cesium-137 or calibrated usually to cesium-137 which is uh, 662 keV or kilo electron volts. So if you're you know surveying cesium-137 or something that, that falls within that energy range you're gonna get a pretty accurate reading but if you look at these lower energy levels for example here if we look at americium-241 which falls into about that 60 keV gamma energy this detector will actually over respond by a factor of about six. As you increase uh, your gamma energies and, and go into say barium-133 into that area, 
you see that it actually under responds and then if we increase the energy it approaches one to one again and then as we get into the higher energy radiations say for example like cobalt 60 it actually will again over respond to the actual radiation at Sarah. So that's kind of a complicated way of showing you that this is really not the best detector to use when taking radiation exposure or dose rate measurements. Now to correct for this uh, energy dependence, Ludlam has designed a couple of energy compensation filters that will enable more accurate exposure rate and dose equivalent measurements. Basically what these filters do when they're in place is they flatten that energy response across those gamma energy ranges that you're most commonly going to encounter in the field of radiation protection. There's two of them here. This yellow one is an exposure filter. So with this filter in place and attached, you're going to get a truer reading for exposure rates in millirenkin per hour. And then the uh, little black filter, if you've got that in place, that's the dose equivalent filter. And that's going to give you a truer reading for dose rates in millirem per hour. So these uh, energy compensation filters, they run about $100 uh, each. And uh, if I put that energy graph back up, you can see that both filters provide approximately the same or very similar dose corrections across the wide range of gamma energies. So I think either, uh, either one of those filters would be appropriate for a response situation. So in conclusion, I think this is a really good detector. Uh, it's ideally suited for taking contamination measurements of personnel and equipment, but I would be cautious using this for exposure rate or dose rate measurements unless you have one of these energy compensation filters in place.